What's up guys, today we're going to be tying the fathead minnow. It's the same fly I used in last week's video uh, at the Hidden Creek. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It shows how well this fly does on some creek bass, even a redfish. And uh, I've caught several species on it, not just those. Um, unfortunately not video documented, but this is a killer fly. Let's learn how to tie it now. I actually got this pattern from a buddy of mine, Chris Vexay, and he works over at Sam's in Orange Beach. And I'm telling you, if you're in the South Alabama area, you need to go over there. The dude is a wealth of knowledge. I mean, he's tagged in every single post, seems like, for fish ID along the Gulf Coast. Dude knows his stuff. He's really good at what he does. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and he can get you in the best combo fly fishing outfit whatever for your money he knows the stuff he knows what he's doing so go see chris tell him i sent you he'll give you an extra piece of advice i think i didn't clear that with him but yeah maybe all right so i got this pattern from chris and i've changed it just a little bit from what uh he sent me and it seems to be doing good so first thing um we're tying it on vmc nico hooks this is a size two you can tie it on several different sizes, but this seems right here to be the sweet spot for me. Um, I really like the resin closed eye on these. That is really, really cool. Uh, I don't know why, I just like it. Now, one thing I do on all my hooks is pinch the barb down. Why do I do that? Well, I don't need any more body piercings. Now another thing, when I put this in the vise for this particular pattern, I put the barb of the hook inside the vise, like so. So the barb is not actually out, and you'll see why in a minute, it'll become apparent. But when we're shaping it, we have to go back like that, and I've been hooked several times in the tip of the finger, pricked by the, by the barb. So you don't wanna do that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, I got some white, thread and we are just going to lay a thread base down this hook and you want to come back a little bit right to where it starts to bend and that's where we're going to start our first tie in all right and we're going to work with craft fur and you can tie it in a couple different colors i've tied it in tan gray purple all white whatever but tan seems to be very good um actually the best i've used so far best color combo that i've used so far all right now you want to just get a good clump here we're just kind of yep that's about right Cut it off the base and then pull out some of that under fur. Some of it will help build the body up, but you don't want a lot of it. Okay. And then we're going to come about right there and tie it in on top of the hook. A couple good tight wraps and then trim off. Oh, that excess. And that's coming back, maybe a, a hook length for some of the, you know, median fibers there. Now, the next thing you want to do is add some flash. I like adding this pink flash. This shrimp pink is what it is. Uh, it looks really good. And I'm just going to pull two strands out. Now, I'm going to put the strand on the back side and kind of measure it with the longest fibers and come just a little bit shorter than that. And tie that in on the back side and I'm just gonna wrap it over the top tie it in on that side and then just trim the trim them so that's got four strands of flash that's actually enough all night now the next thing 
Now on Chris's pattern, he actually uses UV dubbing for this step, but I've been using Palmer's Chanel and it looks really good. Adds a little bit of bulkiness into the fly. Um, it has a lot of really good aspects. I'm really liking it so far. You don't need much. I'm gonna get about three or four inches there. And tying it in right behind this craft fur. And we're gonna bring the thread all the way up to about right there. You want a little bit of room right there to tie in your other craft fur. And now we're gonna start palmering this around. Not real tight loops, because you don't want to add too much bulk, but you want to know if that's going to be there. Now some of these fibers will come through the, the craft fur that we tie in for the head, and that's good. That's what we want. My kids got home, so it's probably fixed to get loud, but I'm gonna finish this step before I cut the camera off and tell them to be quiet. So, that's about right. Now we tie that off. Okay, not a very good tie off, but okay. There we go. I just wanna trim that off. Yeah, it might not be a very pretty fly, but hey, Fish don't seem to care about pretty flies, do they? All right, so that is that step, and now we're gonna move right on to getting the head of this fly tied on. My kids are here, I'm gonna get them inside, and I promise, it'll just be a jump cut. You won't even know they're here. All right, so I'm back, and now we're gonna be at making the head. So I like to do two colors for the body. I like to do white on, on the belly, and dark on top so we're gonna go with white for belly and it's craft fur just like the tail same thing get you a good little pinch right there and cut it off get a little bit of the under fur off all right now on this we're gonna be tying it forward facing and you want, we're gonna be tying it twice. One needs to go off this side of the hook point, or, or the eye, and the other needs to go this way. It just makes it easier to build the body up. Position good and give it a good couple, couple cranks. I'll trim that off when we get the next pinch. This is gonna, gonna be facing this way. Okay, you can spread that out, kind of. Because eventually it's going to be coming back like that. So I want it good and spread out. No bare spots. And don't trim all of this, but some of it. It adds a good bulk to that. Okay. Alright, now we're going on top and we're doing the same thing on top with whatever color you picked for the tail. For me, it's tan. Same exact steps as the belly. So, instead of making you watch it, we're gonna fast forward this part. It's tied on both sides, just like the belly. Exactly the same, just different color. And I'll catch you whenever it's time to do the next step. Okay, so now it's time we're just going to crank it down a little bit, get everything set. 
Yeah. Okay. And kind of bring your finger in here to the hook point and just start kind of pushing that back. very circular there and we'll bring the thread and put it right in the front on the hook eye okay now this next part is uh is what actually builds the body up and i use loon hard hard head this is clear um suppose you can use something else but I really like this and what I do is just pick the put the cap there just kind of wipe my fingers along it and I hold this fur back and just kind of lightly coat yes this is coming back and that's that profile you want right there that minnow profile now when you got that profile and you got your hair pulled back, you want a couple good wraps to help in the front. And then whip finish. Okay. Now, we're done with the thread so you want to just keep building that that profile add a, just a very little bit of the head cement at a time check it if you got a rotary vise roll it make sure your profile is good on both sides and the bottom Coat the head just a little bit. And swipe it back. Now just kind of hold those fibers. That's the profile light right there. It's just ever so slightly put a little head cement on. Oh, I poured it out. Just kind of cover it good like that. Alright, so now I'm back. Got it all cleaned up. And still working on this profile. You don't want it too too hard, but this stuff don't usually get hard. It's pretty flexible. You know it's called hard head. Pretty flexible. And my wife's laughing at that for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, so that profile we want looking good now one good thing about this pattern and this profile and this Palmer Chanel I use this can be thrown in the marsh and very easily mimics a shrimp like this now I might nice to make it a minnow profile but I mean, it looks very shrimp-like in the water. So now, we're gonna glue some eyes on. And the eyes I use are the living eyes. These are big eyes. I'm a firm believer in big eyes on lures. Even my conventional setups, I'll typically have big eyes. All right, so I'm a fan of crazy glue. I know a lot of you guys probably use some 
or a flat tire super glue or something, but this stuff does great. So you want to come right where want the eye, put you a drop, a drop on the other side. Okay. Then I get the eye, and these have kind of a pointed pupil. I like to point the pupil to the hook eye. Like a natural uh, fish would be. If you can hear a kid, it's my daughter on the porch. Youngest daughter. Something on the other side. Make sure your eyes are, you know. Relatively straight with each other. That looks pretty good. Get them a good push. And from there, we're just going to coat the eyes down good with hard head. And the head of it, pretty good. So that all that stays intact. Make sure you get the thread wraps good. Hard head. Put a little super glue on if you need to. And kind of wipe the hard head down. Pinch the tail and just kind of pull that profile. Yeah. And that right there is a fat head minnow. And man. That is a very, very good fly, and I hope you catch a lot of fish on it, like I have. Uh, like I said, go buy see Sam. Go to Sam's, see Chris. Sorry about that. And he will get you set up on fly fishing if you're not familiar with fly fishing. He'll even give you some tips on the area if you're new to, you know, South Alabama area. Talk to him about species, man. Dude knows a lot. He's traveled all over the place. Um, pretty jealous of all the rooster fish he's caught so goodbye talk to Chris tell him I sent you and uh, buy something from Sam's so that fly is ready to go kick some fish's butt looks good huh way too close to the camera And so you can see that profile from that way. That good head that pushes water. Bait fish head, bulging eyes kind of. This pattern kind of does it all. Alright guys, well, I've been Jeff. Good vibes, tight lines, God bless.